Hello, welcome to episode 21 of the Jurassic World Doddle podcast. Uh, I'm joined with Assis. How are you doing, buddy? Hi, how's it going? Very good, man. How are you? <laughs> um, I'm okay. I have to go to school later on, so I'm kind of bummed about that. But today Sounds is good. Arya's birthday, so happy birthday to her, two years yeah, old. She is the, uh, <laughs> she's the Jurassic World Doddle podcast. Um, official dog. Official dog, yeah. What do we call it? Um, oh, I mascot. don't know. Mascot. Yeah, mascot. There you go. She's also a Jurassic babe, so indeed like, she is. Get on She's it, guys. Pretty little girl. Um, if you go to our website, you'll notice we have a uh, couple of new things added down the left-hand side. You'll see a Fandango um, banner, nice banner thing. If you uh, if you click on the link, you can get discount on uh, limited edition cinema cards. Uh, we're also <laughs> sponsored by Famous IDs. Use coupon code JWORG for twenty percent discount and visit Jurassic fangear.com for I mean you probably guessed it Jurassic Fangear um, who would have guessed that that's, that's it, challenging isn't it well I mean what's famous IDs if you didn't already know man I have to get my famous ID still I haven't gotten around dude, to getting it <laughs> dude they're really good as well <laughs> I know I know I know I'll I mean, get around to it yeah I mean I'd use the guy for like props or something like he's got a good he does it all himself it's really well done that's good um so, I mean, yeah. Man, it's so weird to just be sitting here, like, doing nothing to do with Jurassic Park 4 anymore. It's like... Strange, all... isn't it? <laughs> it sucks. It's like... like oh, um, God. I don't like s- it. Some people may be thinking why... How, it seems like we've slowed down on the site and, and, and stuff. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've slowed down, but we've had more podcasts than ever in the last, yeah, we, like, Yeah, I month. guess we've been focusing on... Um, voicing our opinion rather than um, just writing it down but it's not even that I think just when there's something to post instead of now trying to be the first it's kind of like oh I'll get around to it because even though we are covering the news I think I'm just relaxing I think I'm just trying to my spare time is not solely dedicated to the site at the moment which is I think we've earned a break after what how many years you've been doing it like eight Mm. Mm. since 2008 and every time there was a piece of news it was like how can I get to a computer? Now how it's... old were you when you started the site? Okay, so how old am I now? 22. I don't know, 22? 22. 22. Yeah. Okay, so if I'm 22... Uh... I don't know why it took me so long to work that out. I'd be 15 <laughs> when I started the site. <laughs> Shit. I remember, yeah. the, I remember when I first visited your site, it was like you were doing a campaign thing and you were sending letters or... We want Jurassic Park Four videos. I think. Oh, dude! You yeah. heard of that? Yeah. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, I got. <laughs> it rings a bell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, shit. Fuck, man. Yeah, you've been around since the early days. Because I, I remember, remember you yeah. emailing me. You've been. I, you've I was been a kid too at that for point. A long time. I was fourteen <laughs> yeah. when you started the site. So I'm sure but, most people listening yeah. were were kids back then. Um, yeah, we want four. The we want <laughs> four campaign. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Jesus, man. We could have chose a better name, huh? Yeah, um, you could have. But that was that was. I guess it sticks to the point. We want four or what? Yeah, yeah work, Jurassic, right? Jurassic Park four. Well, yeah, I guess you could consider in it a way. Place. <laughs> yeah, we had a. We sold merchandise. We had t-shirts. Oh, man, I, made, I, I that. made. We sold quite a lot, man. Really? T-shirts, hats, keyrings. Yeah, people bought that stuff. It was a uh, oh, shit. Big Razzie did the artwork. I don't know who that is. Well, that's that's bringing it back. Big Razzie. I like. She was like the queen of Jurassic Park back then. I um, she yeah, I don't know how you, Chris knows Razzy. Hey Chris, he's, how you doing? Oh, he's not here. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. That would scare me. That would be um, kind of creepy. Yeah. So no, many good were, memories into your days, website. Oh yeah, yeah I'll, rumors I'll, and whatnot. Okay, I'm I mean, gonna have a little. I'm gonna go on web. I mean, I have all the old designs on my. What computer. was the first website article you ever posted? Oh man, I don't even know. If, cause I, I want to know I'm, this. I'm, I'm, I want to know. I'm quite a. I'm one of those. I'm like a, a digital hoarder. I keep everything. Like so I'll means you should have it somewhere, right? Something. Oh, I'll definitely have it somewhere. Be on a hard drive or be in. I still have. I have so many. I have so much from from. I'm just gonna go on Jurassic Park Four dot org. Oh, actually, here's one. Uh, download protocol four slash Jurassic. I'm trying to find some old. Um, versions of stuff i want to go i want to oh go my back god to, oh dude do you want to do you want to see the old site yeah toss it to the, me 
uh, like an active link. Is it the uh, Vine one? Let me let me send it to you. Uh, yeah, the Vine one. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, that's so classic, dude! Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love this site. Yeah, I liked the site, man. Like now, will it's you be t- buying new comics? What the hell? What's that? On the on the right hand side, will you be buying the new comics? How old is this? Oh shit! I didn't even see that. That's like an old poll. What are the results? I don't think that. It's probably dead. Oh my god, the poll is still active. <laughs> this is more nostalgic than anything we've ever seen before. I know. I bet I can get us the old. Who are those people down there? Is that, that's is that the you We Want the, uh... Four campaign. No, I didn't do a video. That's that's. I had groups of people who did videos. Sent them all to Universal Studios. Who the hell are these people? Do you know any of them? No, I just asked them in the on the website oh. to submit their videos, and people did. It had a big uh, big video thing. Man, that's so gnarly to see like the new articles on the old website. I know it's weird, that isn't it? It's a shame. It's a shame. Look at the status. Good story. New trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, yeah, it was always Frank Marshall saying, like, you know, on the back burner, so I changed the status up there. <laughs> and then, I can't believe this. This is bringing me back a bit. Yeah. Oh, look on the About page. You've got the three different scripts, like, concepts for the movie that we th- we knew of at the time. You had the John Sayles one. Then you've got the unknown in 2007, the one with Laura Dern where she said she was coming back and then you've got the Joe Johnson new trilogy down there which I assume morphed into what we got now. Man, I want to find these bloody scripts. We'll find them, man. I'm digging so far. Also, on the cast page you've got Laura Dern and, and Richard Attenborough. Oh. Yeah, there's his <laughs> quote, man. Obviously, if Steven Spielberg asked me to do an, to do Jurassic Park 4 then I would jump at doing that. That's Richard Attenborough. He could have man, been this is movie, weird, man. Yeah, the crew. All right, I'm going to get into my my controversial statement right now. I think it's okay. perfect time. All right, I've watched Jurassic Park four probably Jurassic World, sorry, probably uh, six times now. I think. Okay. Um, the more I watch it, the more I feel confident in saying, I think the Lost World, Jurassic Park three, feel more like Jurassic Park movies than Jurassic World does. Okay. <laughs> Even the Lost World. I hate the Lost World. And I think I'd rather watch that when I'm feeling a Jurassic Park like moment than Jurassic World, I think. Mm. Yeah. And you and you you you're set with that. I think so. Even it, JP three. I'd rather watch Jurassic Park three when I'm feeling a Jurassic Park craze though, you know? That's what I do now. I don't watch Jurassic Park. It's like that's too good. I watch something shitty every now and then, so I watch <laughs> I watched The Lost World the other day. I was like, this is I liked this movie as a Jurassic Park movie more than Jurassic World. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's gonna, I don't know. That's a tough one. I, th- I think, um, I know what you mean about JP3 being, you know, if I want a quick 90 minutes of Jurassic action, you can just stick that movie in. You don't even need to be watching and you, exactly. you can feel it. It's the music. It's, uh, Lost World is hands down still the best movie ever to me <laughs> like i have i literally have no issue saying that the lost world is the best movie i've ever seen and and that's oh, wait, not, you're serious right now Even no though because obviously jurassic park comes first yeah yeah obviously but you know as as it just ticks everything for me as a sequel as uh, uh trying to fit a different tone just everything about it the cinematography the setting the build-up even the deleted scenes like Every single thing of that. There's nothing in that movie that I don't like. I just love it. The vehicles, uh, and obviously I love Jurassic Park. That's why I'm here. But yeah, the Lost yeah. World, man. I just I'm in love with that movie. Okay, I'm not. I'm not saying Jurassic World's a bad movie. I like that movie more than the Lost World and Jurassic Park Three. It's right up there with Jurassic Park as being one of the better sequels. But I'm saying it doesn't feel Jurassic Park. I I see what you're saying though. So you like the Lost World more than Jurassic Park? No, 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 no. Like you said, in you know, Jurassic Park is is too good. It's so good. Yeah, um, that's like an event when I sit down and watch that movie. And exactly. likewise, so is the Lost World. But the Lost World, you can also just have so much fun with. Like I was playing it through on the Lego game, and I was just like, uh, when I was hearing the music and all the voices, I was like, man, all I want to do is watch Lost World right now. 
Oh, yeah, that's why. That's why I watched it. I was playing the Lego levels as well at the uh, abandoned village. I'm like, I gotta play. I gotta watch the movie again. Dude, yeah, exactly. See, you're oh, we, that, we, we we're so changing so you. Good. Stop! No, 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 no! I still don't like the Lost World because it doesn't do things right. But man, a Lego game does the Lost World so well. It really does. Yes, I see. I imagine. Yeah, that's quite a controversial thing to say. Um, I just love the Lost World. I just think it's great. Man, I, I want to love great. it so bad. I really want to love it. I'm hoping Jurassic World 2 or Jurassic Park 5 has that Jurassic, the Lost World tone, sorry, but it's done better, I guess. Yeah, well, I, I uh, the Lost World definitely has a... I was really hoping, as I said in previous podcasts, that Jurassic World would have a Lost World theme, you know, of uh, the kind of the tone. Yeah. And it did, it, and in the trailers, it started to get that, you know, with the guy being dragged. But in the actual movie, it's so that goofy. Sh- that shot was wasn't even in the movie. It was it was sort of like on a, a camp CCTV sort of monitor, thing. yeah, which is cool. But like, I was really hoping for so much dark jungle, and there wasn't really any. And and it's not a criticism because it didn't need to. Yeah, but it, it did yeah. fine. But you know, it's what it's we just wanted. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I was different. kind of just hoping for another Lost World, I think. I wasn't going to get it. Could you imagine if the, the next movie is like The Lost World, though? Would you shit your pants? But what are they going to do, man? Like, I'm telling you, man. Fucking military raptors. It's happening. I'm, no, I want I mean, this. I mean, that's such a broad concept, but what's the story? Chris like, Pratt, he has, he has to be back. That's, that's the only thing I know. There's no I, way they're going to leave him Do you know out. what, though? I'm not, I'm not even fussed if he's not back. Like I don't, what? he's at, the actors aren't a hooking factor to me, and they never have been. Think other than you know the gold bloom, but think about Jurassic Park. It's never used, you know, huge A list as it, and and that's not a criticism of anybody in the movie. But Chris Pratt and Bryce are much bigger than Sam Neill and Laura Dern were back in the day. So, but it's, it, I kind of prefer that. It's, it, I don't, I'm not a, you know, a kind of Hollywood star type. Well, to be fair, Chris Pratt wasn't really a star when they cast him in the movie, right? This is true. This is true. Now he's and, fucking And he was huge. great. I, I liked him, man. I, I just, I don't think the franchise needs to rely on actors. You know, the same actors returning. Yeah, but is Universal really going to forget about Chris Pratt? He's like, yeah, we just made one point, no, like $2 no, billion. No. Dollars. We're not going to bring Chris Pratt back. Nah. No, no, of course <laughs> they are. I mean, the industry shifted in that way. Because if you, I mean, think, think about Lost World, man. It, it only brought back. Jeff Goldblum and and Richard Attenborough for a brief scene. In summary, Jurassic Park three, The Lost World are feel be- feel like more. Oh my god, feel more like Jurassic Park sequels than The Lost World. Do- oh my god, than <laughs> Jurassic World does. But Jurassic okay. World is a better movie than those two, I think. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay, so, so, but okay. Because, yeah, it's obviously there's not many people out there that prefer JP3, but I have read a few people who outright say 100% didn't like Jurassic World, didn't feel like Jurassic Park, yeah. didn't feel like the franchise. I much prefer the first two sequels, and that's it for me. Like, I've, I've, I've read a few people who've said that. Yeah, I've seen that too. And I can understand uh, where. I can understand what they mean in that it doesn't feel Jurassic Park. It's it's a really difficult one and I love Jurassic World. Yeah. But it's it's, it's, it's obviously it's, like we've said, yeah. it's taken a new it's taken a new road, it's taken a new theme. It's definitely not it's for the new kids, it's for the newer generation. That much yeah. is certain. It's I don't think it's necessarily for us, really. You know? I think it is. I think it did a lot of fan service in that way. I think it did uh, a bit too much. The visitor center was done badly. Oh, horribly. Uh, but I came out and a couple of people were like, yeah, the abandoned building thing was cool. And I was like, oh, w- w- you know, which bit are you talking about? They're like, but, you know, the maintenance shed bit, the bit with the Jeep. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was the original visitor center, the bit they went into from the first film. And everyone was like, really? <laughs> like, it's not, there's no wide shot. They There's no... There's just a, a kind of half shot of the doorway where they go in, and inside is just like you said, it's just so overgrown that it someone li- literally out. called me out saying, "Yeah, it's been 22 years, you idiot. Of course it's going to be overgrown." I'm, I'm saying it's a bit too much for the movie's sake, you know? Yeah, yeah, damn right, it's going to be overgrown. It's also a movie, yeah. So you know, <laughs> it doesn't have to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I yeah. <laughs> 
it, I was really excited for the original park stuff and stuff, and there really wasn't much of it. But again, I understand why it didn't need it. But, exactly. Um, mm, the maintenance shed was cool, and I think I said this to someone on on a, in a chat somewhere. The bit where Ty picks up the go- the n- night vision goggles. That was nice. It was nice, but it was so quick. It was over before you. Yeah, if you hold on it too long, then people are like, "Okay, we get it." It's Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. move on. Let's yeah, go. this is true, but it was it was kind of like they could have. I don't know. They could have done a I... lot with this movie that they didn't do. Yeah, well, yeah, no, I, I I really enjoyed it, but um, that visitor sent a bit kind of let me down. It just you couldn't. There was there wasn't enough. We didn't spend enough time in it to get nostalgic. It was in and out, and then Nick Robinson burns the original sign, <laughs> um, and then. And then the Indominus Rex smashes his way through it. It's like no. I had no problem with those things. Was like, that's like that's cool. That's cool. I was I was like no, preserve it. <laughs> Save it. <laughs> that makes me um, think. Do you think we'll be back to the old ruins again in the future movies like Sorna or Nuklar? Yo, did you see that? Oh, fuck! Look at the picture right now. I retweeted it from uh, Jaros Jaroslav Kospita. It's fucking sweet. Fuck off. That's so fucking good. What the fuck? <laughs> That's the best thing ever. <laughs> it's so good. Look at you. <laughs> I'm the grumpy as fuck. I love it. What the fuck? This is he's given, probably the he's given, best thing ever. He's given me and Jack tea. <laughs> I love it. I fucking love it. Dude, what the hell? That is the <laughs> best thing ever. That's genuinely the best thing ever. Fuck. Oh, I gotta message him, man. He is the king of life. Oh my god, this is so good. Even though, what's his face? Sam has that stupid no spoilers book. That's hilarious. <laughs> Dude, we all look so good. <laughs> that is so funny, man. I dig this 100%. I can't believe that. That genuinely, like... Oh, my God. I've never seen something that sick before. I came out of nowhere. I love you. You look so grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like that, though. It's funny. Oh, my God. I'm on fire, literally. Holy shit. No way. I think I see the Nublar, like, little wave sign I'm always talking about. Where? Underneath you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Oh, my so God, good. man. And then I have, I see, uh, what's his face? Jurassic Cast's police car they're always talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm 100% on board. I can't, I literally, I can't stop looking at this. So Chris, has Chris, Chris hasn't seen this yet. We've got to post it to him. No, has he hit you with the dinosaur bone? Is that what's on the back of your head? I think it's fire. <laughs> oh. I was flaming about something. So yeah, make sure you guys go follow Yaroslav Kosmina at Jaros. Four two eight. He's a legend, a scholar, yeah. and a gentleman. <laughs> check him on. Um, check him out on uh, Facebook as well. Um, I always, well, occasionally during the pre-production of Jurassic World, uh, I posted a lot of his artwork. He's a he's a really talented artist. Um, I forgot the name of his page though. Did you see that uh, that that little sculpture he did? Holy shit! Put the Godzilla to shame. Yeah, JK Art. It's all one word. Follow, follow them on uh, Facebook as well. There's so much of his work there. Um, I, I, I'm so speechless, man. That is awesome. That is so friggin' awesome. This has made my month already. July first or July second, whatever the hell day it is today. My month is already made solid. Yeah, genuinely is perfect, man. I, I, <laughs> I didn't, even, I didn't like, I didn't expect that, that at all. <laughs> This makes me incredibly happy. I re- I even forgot what we're talking about now. Holy shit! I know, I know. I don't even know. 
<laughs> That's so sick. We gotta get him on the podcast. Yeah, we really have to. I can't believe it, man. That's so good. Yeah, man. Holy shit. <laughs> Chris's beard, man. That's his. That's his feature. Him and his plaid shirts. Forget it. It's him. Yeah. Does he have a dinosaur in his thing? No, it's a collar. Never mind. I'm, I can't. Are you. You look like you're in like Nedry's raincoat. Or something. <laughs> I look funny. I like it. It does look like me. That's insane. The attention to detail is spot on. Yeah. Even Tim looks great. They all look brilliant. I like this so much. I want a scan of this. Like a high, high quality scan. Yeah, man. Alright, well, let's, let's get back to the podcast now. Alright, what were we talking about? <laughs> That's so good. I can't believe Nublar's there. Yeah, that <laughs> stupid Nublar song. I want to make that again, just for him. Um, what? I don't know. That's kind of it, I guess. That was so funny in the last podcast. Yeah, we sound like bumbling idiots. Yeah, well, we already are. But, that, you know. I, I, I listened to it again the other day. I, I have no idea what we're talking about. Oh yeah, in that earlier. yeah, no idea. We were talking oh, about bananas too, like, apparently. So, and and here's an interview with Courtney James Clark, <laughs> and it's like <laughs> we, the, the first twenty minutes is us just talking utter nonsense, like me and Chris just making sounds <laughs> the mic, like <laughs> like that kind of thing. It's so stupid. Oh shit! Life is good like that, man. Life is good. It's the simple things in life, like making sounds like cavemen, and then laughing at <laughs> Rashida Jones and her bananas. Oh, I love Rashida Jones. Can we just talk about how hot she is for a second? She's so hot. And she's so and, good and at everything she does. She's so good. She's so talented. Mm-hmm. She's so, like, attractive. She's so funny. I, that's why I think she'd be really good in a uh, in a Jurassic. I want to see in a Jurassic Park movie now. I want to see this happen. Mm. I want to see her running around. Um, on the island in you know Laura, Lara Croft type clothing she's a mixed baby right like not I don't mean uh, yeah she's uh, Quincy Jones man. oh shit that. really <laughs> yeah I didn't know that that makes sense yeah. that makes sense Rashida Jones Quincy Jones holy shit yeah I've still got to get the approval from him that it's okay to date his daughter but yeah okay yeah. then <laughs> okay then we're, <laughs> we're close I bet no, yeah, she is. She is lovely though, and I genuinely think she's a she's a talented actress. Oh, yeah, no doubt, and she's a good writer apparently too. Yeah, is she writing the new Toy Story? Um, yeah, Toy Story. Yeah. And she did a documentary on about? women in porn or something too. Did she? I heard that was good. Yeah. Ooh. Like a, like um, like an expose kind of thing. Like a like a negative one or like what yeah. people do after porn. I think a negative one. Okay. Yeah, is it I want to watch full that. Frontal. I have no idea what it's called. <laughs> it's a funny name, though. <laughs> um, do you know? What, do you know what it's called? No, I have no idea, man. I just remember seeing an interview for it, and she was like talking about it. And I, I think it was a negative one. She's like, "Oh, well, here we go, here we go." Hot Girls Wanted is a 2015 American documentary on young go. adult pornography, directed by, yeah. So she produced it. Mm-hmm. She's smart as shit, apparently. Ooh, the film follows the lives of several 18 and 19 year old pornographic actor- actresses. Oh, that's young. A little bit, right? Oh, Netflix bit. picked it up for distribution. Cool. Are we right. even able Wait, to watch it's it out, right now? Man, May 29th. Oh, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so you can watch it. I probably can't. It's Why? Like, Why can't you watch it? The British Netflix is different to yours. Oh. Although you've got Canadian Netflix, right? Is that different, or do you get the North American stuff? No, Canadian Netflix is uh, it's it's pretty shit. It's pretty shit. We're missing a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Man, I miss Parks and Rec so bad. Dude, probably one of the best shows ever made. Yeah, I didn't like it at first, and it took me a few episodes to really get into it. And then send off the final episode. Oh, forget about it. I was in tears the entire time. I've not. I've only done the first two seasons, man. I'm I'm like I'm there with it. I have a lot to watch. <laughs> Yeah, you do, man. I because I do. I do a lot of. In fact, let me let me quick. I do a lot of um, Netflix binge, as we all do. But mine are usually stuff I've already seen. Like, I've what? Watched, Why? I've watched everything of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I never um, watched that, dude. It's so good. They're so dumb. They're all so. <laughs> they're genuinely all insane. 
It's like well, that, that's appealing to me. I like that. Yeah, that's, it's so funny, man. Um, the royal family. Um, I watch a lot of British shows like Bottom and stuff like that. Uh, the Office, that Trailer is. Park Boys. I said, yeah, Trailer Park Boys, man. What the hell? Why? I watch a lot of that, man. That's so funny. I've seen everything. Trailer Park Boys. Man, I can't stand Bubbles' face. I want to punch it every fucking time I see his face. Fuck off, Bubbles. I think they were in Ottawa the like a couple of years ago, and I saw them, and it was like, they're oh yeah. No, it's strange, hicks. but it's 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 a great show. It's, it yeah. really is so funny. It's okay. <laughs> it's all good. Um. Oh, dude, I'm just looking through Rashida Jones on Google Images now. It's just it's just turned a it's turned a page. Megapod. What? Huh? Oh, I just saw. It's like th- I saw a thing. It's like me- Megapod between us and uh, the dress. Yeah. Well, actually, J- uh, uh, Jarus has been saying for ages. He was like, "You guys are gonna do a Megapod," and it's like, "Yeah, we will." It's just like getting. Well, I'm coming over load. there, man. Us oh, the- we can get four of us in one room together. No, f- hang on. Yeah, four of us in one room because Tim's in what's it called? Okay, Australia. so so when you're, yeah, yeah. when you're over. I'll I'll try and come up. Uh, do you know when it's going to be? Um, I think we yeah I think we narrowed it down to August sometime. Okay, unfortunately. Well, ho- hopefully I'll get some time. We can I can come up and then yeah, me, you, Jack, and um, Bam Sam can do it all in a room and then we can get the other two. To... Man, it's going to be disgustingly chaotic. It's yeah, well, us people four are going to die. Drunk. <laughs> yeah, we'll be we'll be dying of alcohol poisoning that night. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully. Hopefully, um, that's a plan. <coughs> yeah. No, that, no, we can do that. So it's a smart idea, actually. Instead of trying to wrangle six people on Skype, we'll get four of us together. Yeah. That'd be awesome, dude. I can't wait to meet you. Like, for real. Like, I, like we know each other. We're friends, but it's like... It's a it's, different time now. It's like internet. You can just make friends and get to know people and yeah, then not I, even yeah. meet them. i got so many online friends, but it doesn't... It's not... It's still not 100%. Like, <laughs> you got to meet these people. <laughs> yeah, once you meet, then it's set. It's set in stone. Yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Can you imagine how awkward that would be? Yeah, that'd be... If we just didn't click. <laughs> how would that work, though? Like, we're clicking right now, aren't we? Like, can you just imagine clicking online and not, like, clicking in person? It'd be really strange, I think. Because I think it's diff- it'd be different for me and Chris because we've Skyped. We know how each other sounds. We know conversations. We like, know what we look like, yeah. Yeah, we know all that crap. Um, for someone you just chat to on Facebook, I guess it must be... It, it must could be, be awkward. Weird. Because people, you know, you can't get emotion really through, um, through text. Through text, yeah. As oh much man, as we try. I'm scared now. Like, what if all three of us get into one room together and it's awkward as fuck? Or like two of us hate the other one or something. That'd be horrible. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should never meet. That's that's probably the plan now. So never right, mind. No mega podcast. Set in stone. No mega pod. I'm never coming <laughs> back to Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Set. Not Sorry, happening. guys, and that's episode twenty-one. See you later. <laughs> Peace out. No, no, yeah, <laughs> no. Um, so there's, so we uh, we should probably talk about what we intended to on this podcast. I'm just going to quickly. So Stan Winston Studios hosted a live uh, webcast, and I, I, if I'm correct, it was meant to be two hours, three hours. It was six or something crazy. It just went. Mad. Yeah, I missed a lot of it. I caught up on the uh, Jurassic Park three and the uh, Jurassic World, and the only thing that pissed me off was how few things there were in uh, Jurassic World. Like, that fucking apatosaur. So good. Oh my god. So damn good. Even yeah, the, Jurassic test, Park the test video they did for the apatosaur, you know, where they get it to cry on the ground and they filmed a scene in their workshop just to see if it would work. My yeah. god, it looked so good. Like, it was so real. And, and it's a shame. It doesn't... Half of the motions that they were doing weren't on screen. Oh, what, what they had on screen though oh my god oh, it was easily so good, the yeah. best dinosaur stuff on the movie easily oh hands down yeah and I think it for things like that I think they really need to embrace animatronics like they did you know like I think Chris was saying it in the last one you've got this seamless wide shot to a close up because you had an animatronic head you know yeah. you had Chris Pratt able to to act and touch it but the whole wide shot is, it, it makes an audience member think that whole thing is real it sells the effect because he was able to touch it. Um, it was so good. It was so well executed, so well put together. But Which that... pisses me off. Like, why do Hollywood producers <laughs> not want to do animatronics? Yeah, it costs a bit more, but you get it's worth it. It's the investment that helps your movie in the end. I don't understand their logic. I think they'll realize that 
for you know it's monetary reasons and while VFX can can end up costing a lot more but the VFX look like simpler. asshole in this movie anyways it's like yeah it's, it's also simpler though you know yeah, fine I wouldn't be complaining so much if the VFX weren't so shit in this movie and uh, yes I'm calling yeah. them out they were not good in this movie sorry deal with it oh maybe a few shots here and there <laughs> I thought it was good no it was good. some of it was really really nice and the raptors were okay they weren't no, they weren't no, fantastic no, no. The T-Rex some shots the of the raptors were fantastic T-Rex I liked I liked it it was no a problem. fucking cartoon oh my god I was upset I don't think I I'm alone dumb. on that one either. I think people. No, agree. you're not alone on that one. I've seen a lot of negativity around the Rex, but you know, I thought, like, yeah, I, I get it. Like, it's not, it wasn't perfect, but I thought the Rex animation wasn't really anything to complain about. Not the animation. It, quite... it looked like a cartoon, didn't it? Like the Iron Indominus looked amazing the entire yeah, it time. It might have been. It might have been the way it was shot because it kind of it does that. Um, Lost World game thing, you know, where she she <clears throat> roars into the camera almost mm-hmm. because of the angle, it makes the head look ginormous compared to the body. I think it's just the way they, were the way they composited the shot. I don't know. I man. know what you mean. It kind of <laughs> looked cartoony and like oversized, like the head. That's the, that's the, the biggest we... disappointment in the movie, in my opinion. Yeah, and there are a few. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Assis loves a good, you know, good disappointment. But no, um... <laughs> it's like a Jurassic Park three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one big one. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, so apparently the live webcast was brilliant. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I was it was two a.m. to six a.m. my time, and I had work at six a.m. I was like, I can't, I can't. There's no way I could get sl- enough sleep in, so I couldn't make it. But it, it sounded like a blast, and we'll have um we'll have a review up in a couple of days from uh, Ryan, who uh, who's written a piece. So well, that will be on the site. So stay tuned on the site. Yep. Um, I'm just thinking. Anything else we need to Oh, yeah. Like, one of the biggest things. Um, uh, what's it called? What's it? Uh, si- mas- masrani.org. No, masrani.com. Right? No, global.com. Oh, yeah. Masrani global. Ah, I haven't, haven't been on it, but yeah, that they've got... That post a, thing they did. That little memo. They've got a, a, a memo, a letter or a memo. Or um, do you know where it is? Uh, oh, it'd be probably Investors, I think, yeah. There it is. Urgent memo from the offices of R. Weisner. Dear investor, due to the unforeseen circumstances at Jurassic World, resulting in the worst financial crisis the company has ever seen, the Bismarck Global Corporation will be holding an emergency board meeting to discuss the future of the company and its various subsid- subsidiaries. It, co- it continues, Our head office phone lines have been extremely busy. We encourage our investors not to panic, but to have trust in the thousands of Bismarck employees all over the world who will continue doing the excellent work they have always done to deliver high quality results to this corporation. Yours sincerely, Richard Weisner, COO. So basically, they're not closing down. Well, they could be, but it's not like an instant. You know, it's you know, like how many how many branches do they have? They have oil, um, telecom, communication stuff, the park itself, yeah. InGen. Like, okay, fine, lose the park, but you still have InGen. Big deal, right? They'll be okay. Masrani as a as an yeah. entity won't go away. It's still going to be there. I guess. I guess we'll see. Oh, could you imagine InGen becoming the bad guys and like Biosyn being the good guys? That'd be a cool role reversal. Yeah, but Biosyn hasn't. It wasn't even. Oh, you know, like you know, whatever. Game. Some competing company. They hire up Chris Pratt. They will get Blue from the island. InGen's making their badass dinosaurs. They go head to head. That's the movie. I'm telling you. That's the future. Okay, yeah, so so the Mizrani memo's on there, so it's good they're still keeping the sort of viral stuff going. It'd be interesting to see the direction the Mizrani website takes, it, you know, if it'll hint any more towards a sequel or anything. I don't think they will, I think it's done um, now, right? Maybe one or... I don't, I don't think yeah, so. It's going to be interesting to follow, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, there's probably loads more to talk about. Can't think of anything right now. Too tired. Um... We, I mean, the 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 main point me and Assis came on was purely to introduce the James Dumont podcast. Um, we had a we had a call with him uh, c- a couple of weeks ago now uh, to discuss the movie and everything, and that's going to be coming up. Uh, Assis, anything else you'd like to? Um, I don't know. 
I've said my controversial point. I want to get that off my chest. It's off my chest now. I can survive. I can live again. I live again. I might go see Jurassic Park maybe two more times in theaters, and I think that'll be it for now. Yeah, Jurassic there you go. Yeah. I just need a few more. I need to yeah. get my cravings. Like I'm still craving the uh, the Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. Yeah, same. I'll um I'll see it. Anyway, we we got some good stuff coming up for you guys. Some more giveaways. Some more podcasts. And, um, yeah, some pretty exciting stuff coming for the site. So stay tuned. Assis, it's been nice to talk as to you always, as always. Yeah. Um, yeah, so here's our interview with James DeMont. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Hey, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Um, are you, are you ready to, to talk go? to you. There's lots of, lots, lots, yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Um, I'm joined with Chris as well. Chris is here. Oh, hey, how's it going? Cool. Hi, Chris. Hey. Nice I mean, to talk to you. So, uh, we had uh, another nice little opening weekend. What do you think? Not bad, huh? <laughs> pretty yeah, amazing. It, it was a tiny, <laughs> it was pretty amazing. tiny little impact. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, it was, yeah, I was a little surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's yeah. Insane. I, I thought, okay, maybe, like, I was pretty certain it was $100 million. Mm-hmm. Maybe 150, but I, I I wasn't you know two two oh eight yeah I wasn't thinking I was going to break 200. I, I, I just thought one to 150 was fine, Ex- you know res- respectable you know. I wasn't thinking the overseas stuff at this point because I know that some other interviews in other countries and they don't they don't get it till much later, you know. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just done amazing. Half, half a billion, yeah, half a billion dollars in one weekend. It's uh, ridiculous. It's great. Uh, gets you closer to profit. Gets you know, it's like, uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Pretty fun. Congratulations for being a part of that. It must feel amazing. Yeah, small part, but a part. That's the most important part. <laughs> so it's an incredibly fun film. Yeah. So well deserved. So, uh, James, your history with the franchise, were you always a fan of Jurassic Park? Oh, yeah. Oh, from, from the beginning. Uh, um, and, you know, more recently I've gotten to know um, Laura Dern, and uh, I ran into uh, Jeff Goldblum at the, uh, at the Vanity Fair party. You know, it was funny because when I did Dallas Buyers Club, you know, Jared was kind enough to bring me to places. So I went two years ago, and then I went last year. And I introduced myself to, to Jeff, and um, or Jared. Jared had introduced us, and he said, "This is my dad." And I was like, "Really? No, no, no in movies and Dallas Park." <laughs> and so <laughs> and I said, "Hey, guess what?" I was like, "I'm in, I'm in Jurassic World." And then his his face like kind of like was crestfallen. He's like, he's like, "Ouch!" He's like, <laughs> uh, you know, and his weird, awkward Jeff. Yeah, well. Uh, Way to rub it in, uh, and I'm like, no, 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 you don't, you don't understand. Like, I like, I'm, I get to be part of the franchise. Like, you know, are you kidding me? No, 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 I'm not going there. I'm like, I love, I love the whole franchise. Yeah, I'm just excited to be part of the team. You know, like I'm in the family. You know, <laughs> just like you know. So it's like he goes, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> yes, yeah, all right. Uh, Okay, okay, you know, like in his typical, you know, like his perfect Jeff Goldblum kind of way, you know. Uh, yeah, well, all right then, marvelous. And I was like, yeah, man, it's, it's a great thing. And and uh, I worked with Laura Dern on one of the game stands call, and we got really close. And and so I've seen her at other events and things. And I said, hey, guess what? You know, I got a dress. Well, she's like, that's fantastic. She goes, you know, Jurassic. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, you know. So, but for me, it's like I remember watching the first one, and I like, I loved it. And then recently, when they did this, they did a re- re-release theatrically of it, uh, Jurassic Park. With, you know, I went with my daughter. I was like, well, we should. We have to see this in the theater. She's like, yeah, but I saw it on TV. I said, nah, not the same. I'm like, we need to go and watch it in the theater. So I've enjoyed it, and then. Uh, Richard Schiff is, a, is an old friend of mine, and he was, you know, Jurassic Park 3, and so, you know, I'm just happy to be part of the Jurassic Park family, you know, and yeah. uh, when That's the residuals come in, it'll be the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such an incredible 
incredible family to be a part of between you know the the classic film is just such an amazing movie and then the the yeah. suite of actors that worked on it it's just it, it's it, the entire creative team that's gone into creating these films uh yeah no, it's, an ama- it's, it's an amazing to just you know be, be a part of it and you know and uh, uh unfortunately i was I working on a film and i couldn't go to the premiere but my son was able to go in los angeles and um I mean, he had an amazing time, and, you know, I, I, I was hoping to, you know, I'd worked with Spielberg but twice before, and I was hoping to kind of reconnect with him, but, you know, Colin and I, the director, got to be pretty close, so uh, I sent him a nice little message and thanking him for being part of it, and, you know, I said, look, I, the first thing I said to him is, I was like, we were on set, because I never met him, I was cast on my tape, and so, um... I kind of came up and I said, hey, I just want to thank you for taking me on this journey. And I said, the journey just starts today. I said, but it's going to go on for a while. Yeah. And uh, he's like, well, you know, man, I really, you know, this is, you know, it was so funny because I, I, I re-watched Dallas Buyers Club like the week before. And then your audition tape came in. And he goes, and you were fantastic. And he's, he's like, I want him in my movie. I want him in the movie. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> So it was like it came out of you know came out of Dallas Buyers Club, but then you know then the work I did in my audition and stuff. But I, you know I came up and just thanked him to, for you know thanks for letting me come on this journey with you. You know this is just like I'm part of a school thing, and so it's, um, you know it's uh, quite remarkable. Yeah, I mean Colin, yeah. we, we've heard from quite a few people that Colin was so involved with um, even extras that had minor roles, uh, and you, you played uh, one of the investors called Hal. Um, yes. D- did he? What? What was your? I mean, if you can tell us, what was your backstory for the character? Well, well, here's what's interesting. You know, because of the nature of the secrecy of the project, you know, everything was done in total like the dark to, for me. Like, for, first thing is the scene that they wrote for the audition was a dummy scene. It, it doesn't exist in the movie at all. Uh, which is fairly common. That's been happening with like Walking Dead and some other, you know, yeah. uh, TV shows where, you know, they don't want to have material out, anything near the storyline. Same thing with like one of the War of the Worlds. It's like, you know, there's, so they created a dummy scene and the dummy scene was like uh, uh, three people on like some sort of like convention, out of town convention at the, at the hotel bar and telling stories and me, trying to hit on the bartender, you know, like being kind of sleazy. <laughs> so like, that's the, you know, the scene is like this and this, and we're talking about, but we're like, you know, we're corporate people, we're talking about certain things. But the, the main thing is, is that, you know, I'm in town, I have a hotel room, and the bartender looks hot. And so, <laughs> so it's this kind of dummy scene of like, me being kind of like a sleazy, lecherous guy, you know, yeah. which, you know, which I've done before. So, but, you know, like kind of a corporate, you know, douchebag, you know, like he's kind of, you know. So, and then the title of the, the fake title was Ebb Tide. Now, we yes. kind of knew it was Jurassic World, but Ebb Tide was the title. So, I was like, you know, you never know. Because there was other movies going on under different titles at that time, which ironically were also shooting in Louisiana, which were Fantastic Four and Terminator. So, everybody had these, like, kind of fake titles. So Ed Tide, we said, oh, I was like, Ed Tide, I was like, oh, yeah, that's Jurassic World. Yeah, I was like, oh, really? Oh. So I, I didn't think anything of it. I, I needed to just be honest and true to the scene. Yeah. So uh, be a sleazy, you know, corporate jerk. And so um, so I went to go tape it in Los Angeles, and uh, a friend of mine that I work with a lot and have a good booking ratio share with him we tape, we kind of worked out the scene, and she's like, yeah, but just make sure that you that." You take that kind of moment where you kind of really give her a look like, hey, you, me, me, upstairs, it could happen, you know? Like, here's my key, you know, that kind of thing. And I was like, it was not that they weren't, the words weren't there, but it's like the essence of that. And so, uh, you know, with, all, with these auditions that you take, you have to kind of, you have to really kind of go for it. Because, and you really go there, and the idea is that, that if you can show them Sometimes it's maybe too much. At least they go, okay, we know he can go there. We can just pull him back a little bit. But if you but if you go halfway, they're like, eh, I don't know that if he can do it. You know. So with these auditions, you don't go too crazy. But so I taped it, and that it was sent. 
and then I heard that they were sending it on to the studio for approval. I was like, oh, and then at that point in time, the word was out that it really was Giraffe and Roll, and I said, yeah, that'd be pretty good. And the, and the roles was like you're being considered for corporate sponsor one, two, or three. So there's no character name. It was just corporate sponsor one, two, or three. And I was like, okay, well, whatever, you know, that's fine. And then they called to check my availability for the schedule, and timing was perfect because I was shooting another project in New Orleans at the time. And so they're like, okay, you know, you got it. Your corporate sponsor one, two, or three. And I was like, okay. Uh, and then so when I, you know, we, we were set just the scene, and finally I was sent the scene much closer to the project. Uh, we weren't allowed to do casting announcements for quite a while. Um, and so then what ended up happening is when we got on, we, we were given a few days before we were given just the scene, and, and uh, we were never told the character name. Also, between the three of us, it was Anna and, and Matt, we didn't know who was one, two, or three. <laughs> so, so we got there prepared to be, I knew there were two guys, so it was like either I'm corporate sponsor one or corporate sponsor three, because those are the men, you know? Yeah. Um, so we didn't know. And so when we got, so also it was very secretive in terms of like, you know, uh, we were vanned into the facility. We were, uh, I had a park outside the facility, we were vanned in, and then, a, uh, and then another van took me to my trailer. But then there's other, when I went to go to the I was vanned everywhere. Usually, you walk over places, you go, they didn't want you wandering or seeing anything. And then when you got there, you had to sign all these NDAs about, if you see anything on set, you can't take photographs or Twitter or anything. And I'm like, oh, all right. So, I mean, everything was pretty much stealth, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, look, for me, my trailer was near Ty Simpkins, and uh, my son and Ty uh, played Little League together, and I was their assistant coach. So we hadn't seen each other in a while, but the year previous, we had, you know, took our team, you know, all the way to the championship and almost won. And uh, nice. so I was been able to awesome. kind of connect with Ty and his mom, and I was like, hey, I'm in this thing. They're like, oh, I'm so happy. So uh, then when we get on set, like, you know, I met Colin and everything, and he goes, okay, James, you're one, you're close to one, you're two, and you're three, and I was like, okay, so we'll figure out the thing, and then, so then I, you know, at a certain point, I had a chance to, you know, look around, and I'm like, you know, I met B.B. Wong years ago, so that was cool, and Bryce Dallas Howard, I met her father um, during uh, uh, when, when Dallas Fires Club had won the Golden Globe, I met Ron Howard at a Universal party. Uh, the old, the old party. So I talked to him for a bit, and then finally Bryce kept looking at me, and looking at me, and she's like, "Hey, you, you look really familiar." I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. I'm, I'm one of those guys, you know, that shows." And she's like, "No, no, no." I was like, "I said Dallas Fires." She, no, I got the DVD. Haven't seen Dallas Fires with that kid, but I gotta wait to watch that at night. I'm like, "Yeah." And she goes, "There's something recent." And I was like, "Do we get on up?" She's like, yeah, get on up. She's like, I just went to the screening last week. She had gone to like an advanced screening of Get On Up. So, um, yeah, that was like my, that was how I was, you know, I walk in and this is who you're going to be. And then Colin talks about he loved the House Fires Club and my audition. And then Bryce was like, you know, so I get on up. And it was just, I mean, you couldn't be more welcome <laughs> to like, you know, uh, that was my, that was my first day. So I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> That's cool. How many days were you filming yeah. for? Uh, I just shot two days, but um, the way it works is that, you know, with these larger projects, they kind of, uh, you, you know, they, they lock you up for the week, and so they're able to kind of, if weather, the things kind of come up, you know, I did a costume fitting, or I had to actually did a couple costume fittings to uh, get the suit right. Um, and so I did, you know, so I, just, I paid for the week, but I worked a couple of days. That's cool. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. And you got to be on a Jurassic Park no. set. Yeah, but when I went into like the, the the corridors and the lab and stuff, I mean, it was it was awesome. I was like, oh my god, this is this is it. You know, this is where it all this is where all the dinosaurs start, right? You know, in the lab. So uh, way too much fun. It must have been so much fun. I the mean, sets are so fun. Yeah. Did you get to see inside Dr. Wu's lab? 
Yeah, uh, uh, not inside his, his personal lab, but on the main parts of either side. When you know we're walking down the corridor, there were labs on either side. Yeah. It's all on glass. Stuff. So, um, yeah, we were kind of contained to one particular area where she's getting her pitch. You know, so uh, I did. You know, during time, there's just lots of extras around. So you know, I try to not you know get in the way of stuff. Uh, you know, you have camera guys coming down hallways and stuff. So, you know, for us, it was just a matter of, uh, I just saw the things that were kind of in that the lab area that we kind of went pulled into it. Not the one where you kind of put a finger and stuff on it, but uh, it was awesome. It was really kind of like, you know, I mean, they don't, they don't mess around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, I've been in things where, oh, that looks fake. That, like, that looks, all of it looks real to me. Yeah, I mean, you know, the set um, was so incredible. Everything we saw was so yeah. detailed. It yeah, and that's, uh, I think the, that's something that they kind of always go on is, um, you know, they don't skip on the money. And uh, yeah. and if there, if, if it is truly a DNA splicer, if it's, if it's really, like, whatever whatever would be the most state-of-the-art, and I'm sure the same thing with sponsorship, you know. Uh, there was a, a, a lot of blatant sponsorship and interesting world, you know, drinking your coke and your, you know, in the eighties yeah. and they're like, I got, yeah, I, I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> um, but like in the lab, I also think like same thing would like to say the art kind of, I mean, what corporation wouldn't want their, you know, their DNA slicer or their, you know, high frequency, you know, uh, microscope or computer to be, you know, viewed in, uh, yeah, so I um, mean, yeah, the stuff is all state of the art, from what I understand. Yeah, so I if, think... you, if you what you would find in, in any like high tech lab in any part of the world. Yeah, it really looked. I, th- I think I heard that they um, they rented a load of a, a load of the equipment for the labs from a nearby university or something, and it was all the most up to date it could be. Yeah, all real. We all know. Yeah, that's all state of the art. I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, they're not, you know, it's not antiquated in any way. It would be the best of the best. So, uh, to me, it looked incredible, especially with all the little, and the embryos and, the, you know, the little crystallized. I mean, it was just incredible. Incredible. Was yeah. there anything you shot for the movie that didn't make the final cut? Uh, yeah. There was a few, there's a few little kind of, like, jibes and jokes that I kind of made there, you know? Yeah, and uh, and I think they kind of pulled away, you know, pulled away from it a little bit. There was like, you know, we, you know, we want to be, you know, I don't remember I said things something, you know, bigger or better, you know. And it is. It's what's funny is it's, it goes back to that. There was another line that I had with like Bryce, where it was just like, well, you know, you know, we like bigger and better, you know. And I kind of look at her like with a sexual, kind of like give her a little <laughs> sexual you <laughs> might think. I think it might just been a little like over the top kind of sleazy, you know. Yeah. So I think that that one that one got pulled. <laughs> um, but what's funny and ironic is, you know, that's the scene, you know, my general dummy audition scene. That's the kind of you know guy that this guy was. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, definitely. Oh. Yes. You know that one. You know, I think they just didn't need that joke. It was just we we got there was always that kind of connection between the two of us. So it was fine. Uh, you just didn't need to go that stuff. Further, so. Yeah, so there's an extra little sleepy job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I absolutely got the feeling of that dynamic, even without it being immediately present. Yeah, you got it. Like, he's just, you know, he's a money dude. She needs something. She's being all, she's, you know, she's flirting a little bit. And he's just like, yeah, okay, you know. Where, where do I, where do I, you know, where do we write the check? You know, like, that's, <laughs> like, that's the vibe, you know. It's like. You know, I don't think yeah. anything really, really was going to be happening between Hal and her. But, yeah. <laughs> but the point was, is it's the idea of this is how you, you know, you have to play a little game here Bit of and get, get them to come. You know, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, nah, I mean, I, I really, I, I enjoyed. I mean, there's so many little one-offs in the movie. These tiny little short scenes where you introduce the characters for a short amount of time, and I really felt like the dynamic just yeah. worked, and it was believable, and you really felt like there was more to it than just it's not just a person that's coming in to say something there they seem like well, a real... that, that is that is like that that was pointed out to me too when i went to go do my top shooting 
uh, Daniel, who's the costume designer, also did this movie that I did previous to that. was called Tromo, which mm-hmm. will be a big movie coming out um, uh, this fall and probably an opportunity for Brian Cranston to, to fill that little slot in his mantle for either an Oscar or a Golden Globe. And so wow. uh, the same costume designer who did Jurassic, did Trumbo did Jurassic World, and when I went to go for my fittings, he was like, well, you're going to do pretty well with this one. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, there's not a lot of speaking roles in this. You know, there's very limited. He's like, the dinosaurs have the most of the most film time. And he says, you know, there's just very few speaking parts in this film, you know. So he's like, congratulations, because, you know, I was working on Trumbo. I mean, I had a nice supporting lead, but there were many, many, many people in that movie, you know, so many speaking roles in that movie. Here, I think what's beautiful is they were really kind of picky about, you know, mm-hmm. uh, who, you know, and uh, so that they keep it kind of sparse and interesting. And, uh, um, yes, I was very glad to be one of those few people that are, you know, they kind of feed the story and kind of let, have to let the story get, go on. I mean, one of my favorite things in Jurassic World is the, is, you know, the, the raptor, when, when they send out the raptor, the raptors to go, you know, track down the dinosaur, I'm like, yeah. they do it and then they start talking to each other and then they turn on the other people and they're like, no, 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 like, like we're not, we're not going to go trap this guy. He's one <laughs> of us. We're going to come get you. <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, it's terrible. It's, me, like, it's so much fun. Like the chase yeah. was fun, but the turn was fun, and you know what I mean. And and then even that beautiful thing of even breaking through there by his, you know, Chris's human interaction with them, the connection mm-hmm. to them that even you know that can help save them. I mean, that those are like that's Jurassic Park gold. You know what I mean? It's those things. Because here we are, we're trying to change nature. They're trying to, you know, you know, but sometimes these are who they are. These predators are predators. You know, that's what they're, you know, mm-hmm. you know, he's telling for sport, not for, you know, out of food. Yeah. Out of necessity. This is who this, this is what this person is, you exactly. know, and uh, we're, well, are we trying to change the very natures of things? Here we are in this time will be, you know, it's, God, wouldn't it be great if we could, you know? Um, I mean, yeah. it was a 60 minute episode about the possibility of being. But that there was, I guess, some um, something encased in some sort in in, uh, in ice. But there's still a possibility they could pull DNA out of it in order to bring that species back. And I was like, "Yeah, man." <laughs> it was like, <laughs> "Wouldn't I'm like, do it?" <laughs> you know, be amazing to let's see. do that. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's still yeah, just a. Amazing that I, like the mammoths that they've been able to find preserved in the ice and from the tundra in Siberia. It just it's still so incredibly stunning to me that that can even happen. And it, it, who knows what else is buried? Could. So you take that and you have to gene splice it with another with a, with an elephant, with an mm-hmm. elephant, and you know you could have this hybrid. I mean, it could. I mean, just the, the mere idea of it when I watched the thing, I was like, yeah. And the, the next thought is like. And every Jurassic Park fan is doing the same thing I am. Like, yes, yeah. like it happened to me in my lifetime. You know, it's yeah, not a exactly. just a movie. It could really happen. You know, <laughs> we could get so close to a real Jurassic Park. We I could. Mean, and we're like, wouldn't like, and I, my, my kids are, you know, eleven and fourteen, and I'm like, you know, uh, I make the joke because I'm, you know, originally I was from, I'm from Chicago, and so my grandfather would say to my father, maybe in your lifetime you'll see a world championship. And then my father said to me, maybe in your lifetime you'll see a world championship. And I say to my, my son, maybe in your lifetime you'll see a Chicago Cup of World Championship. But, but, but when that 60 minutes thing came on, uh, the first thing I was like, I paused at the ball, I'm like, I was like, maybe in your lifetime you'll get to see some prehistoric, you know, animal that will come back. I was like, wouldn't that be cool? for me? like, yeah, dad, whatever. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, like, the, guys, it's, it's possible. The the paleontology advisor on the films, Jack Horner, he's it's the chickenosaurus, isn't it? That's his. Yeah. He's he's, yeah. Re- he's trying to reverse engineer a chicken embryo to to yeah reverse engineer it into what would appear to be a dinosaur. I think that's incredible and scary at the same time. Yeah, it's well, yeah, uh, but 
bombing. It's not. It's not a movie from 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Like this is. This is. It's, there's a scientific possibility. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's happening you right know? now, which is when, when a movie can actually be influ- You know, make a, a profound influence on science when an opportunity shows itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. So James. You obviously you've seen the film and it was great and it hinted at sequels and 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 the possibility of continuing the story yeah. on and no doubt they're going to do a sequel. Um, I mean, yeah. we've even talked about it. Where would you and I, and like I, to and see I it didn't, go? I didn't get eaten. So I mean, you know, uh, Frank Marshall, you know, Stephen, Stephen Kyle, you know where I'm at. You know where I'm at. We got to get your character you know? back. I, yeah, I, I mean, came for. A Verizon Thesaurus, and I'm expecting to see my Verizon Thesaurus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's... You know, we paid good money, and uh, what happens? You know, this exactly. is a negative on our brand. So let's redo this thing again. Let's figure it out. Yes. So go ahead get to your question. <laughs> where Where would you like to or see problem. the sequel go? Ah, uh, that's a good one. We were just talking about that a couple nights ago with some friends. Um. Well, the last shot is of the dinosaur kind of on the helipad. Yeah. Like, this is our, our way, you know, like, this is, you know, um, this is our place now, you know? And you're going to go, and, well, well, okay, how are humans going to be involved in the next one, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it, if that's anybody's guess, I mean, I think you've got to start, I, I think I have to go, and what's lovely is, like, I think with AMC or somebody was, up until the open, up until the premiere, I, I was watching stuff. I was watching, rewatching them, the Jurassic on television. I think they did like a whole evening or, or like a whole day of like Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um. So I think you got to look back and go, what are the clues? I mean, that's the fun part of all. What are the clues? You know, I can I can say I've heard that there's at least two more of these. Yes. For sure. Or, but I know for, for sure there's definitely one, but there's people that have been uh, been spoken to about, you know, two two more. Mm-hmm. So, it's going to get fun, folks. This, this is, you know, get ready to get, you know, those who are not on the Jurassic Park uh, bandwagon, uh, get over it, because it's going to be around for another decade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? You know, yeah. these movies, they take a while to get done, but they did pretty quickly, this one. So, it's a matter of script. I think a lot, you know, many people, you know, I think there's a lot of things people really loved in the script. There's some people who are a little critical. Uh, I thought Colin did an amazing job. I So, I mean, I don't know if he's probably going to be on the next one. I think it'll be amazing, and I'll throw it out there. Spielberg, it's fun. You know, come on back. You know, this is a bona fide, you, you know what to do. And uh, if anybody can take this to the next next plateau, it's, it's Spielberg. So I think he's got a, I'm hoping he'll be more, I don't know, he was very involved in this, but I'm, I'm hoping he picks up the reins and says, let's, let's do it again, you know? And I think he'll be, you know, he'll be good about script and getting it, to, you know, what kind of story do we want to tell? But uh-huh. I think it seems like that last shot of the dinosaur overlooking the whole, Jurassic World, it's like, okay, now what do we do? But there's also the other, you know, the, the secret, you know, the secret uh, the embryos and stuff mm-hmm. that are, are taken away and in a safe place. And so, um, that you know, what do you, what do, you do? Do you build it some, you build it somewhere else and then come back and take over that beautiful, you know, uh, island? I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, it'll be interesting. Exactly. Very interesting. I'm excited either way. The franchise is back, and it's no, me too. Yeah, it, yeah. Back in a very. But big I think in order to do it right, I think you got it. You got it. You got to, You know, I think it's Spielberg time. I think to really, you know, that, then then you know, half a billion at, at the box office won't mean anything if Spielberg jumps on board. Yeah. Uh, but I also think this has been a great. I mean, I watched Collins, you know, other feature, um, and since. Fantastic. Uh, I think you think he was the right guy at the right time, the right mm-hmm. project. There's too many things, you know, it was all kind of happening. And it takes, you know, it takes time to get these things going. But I think 
I think they knew going in that they're, they're, they knew, I think they know what the next one's going to be, you know, and maybe the second one after that. But that's it, it seems that, you know, you don't, you don't kind of go into these things uh, without a bigger kind of master plan. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll see. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's I'm definitely the feeling tonight. I got. Go, so what was that, Chris? Uh, that's the feeling I got going into this. That there's definitely there's definitely a plan. That there's I, I feel there's you a bigger feel plan. The, yeah. the inkling of the groundwork of just a there's a bigger picture going on between NJ yeah. and Doctor. Yeah, they also think too. If you look at Universal Studios themselves, like they're they're you know the one in Hollywood, the one in Hollywood has the Harry Potter one. The one in Florida has the Harry Potter. Now the Hollywood one's going to have it. You know. It's going to be time, it's going to be time for them to revamp the Jurassic Park ride at Universal, anyways. Yeah, definitely. So yes. I think it's a bigger, you know, like there's a bigger kind of, that's a bigger thing. You know, you're not you're not not going to have a revamp of of that ride. You know, without what's one movie, you're just not. Exactly. You know. I mean, it's not um, just in that fact, ride. My cousin is in that. My cousin is in that business and helped to build Universal Studios. Uh, Japan and, and Universal Studios Singapore. So, um, so you know, I, you know, I, I'm going to start leaning on him a little bit to go. Have you heard anything about what they're going to do with Jurassic Park now that Jurassic World is here, or they just keep it there and on the first one? Or because you got to know those like those clear, you know, traveling globes that you're in. You know what I mean? Like that. That's that's a ride. You get into one of those. You know, even if it's virtual reality thing. But, yeah. you know, there, there's got to be some stuff you're going to do, you know. There's, um, there's murmurs and rumors, but nothing quite solid yet. You keep hearing these little flutterings yeah. of something's coming, but they don't know what yeah. yet or how big yeah. is it going to be. I would think by the time the DVD is released, which is so here, by Christmas time, the DVD should be out perfect in mm-hmm. time for Christmas. Please buy the DVD. It helps me and my family. <laughs> with medical and dental insurance. It's not about money, money. It's about being able to earn my insurance. So I encourage everyone to buy the DVD when it comes out. <laughs> Already for the behind the scenes, when the yeah, uh, right. you know all the fun stuff about how we did it. Um, but yeah, we think around Christmas time when the DVD comes out, there'll be some sort of rumors or inkling of you know starting it back up again. Um, that's the but, you know, way to do it. It'll come down to script. I think you know. I think it's when when they really feel the script is right. Uh, so, and I, I think Chris Pratt was amazing. And I thought Bryce was a, fantastic. I just feel like, uh, you know, those two at the helm are great, and, you know, BD's going to come back if he's not dead. Certain people are, are clearly, you know, it's a for you, it's a one and done. So, mm-hmm. um, there's that. Yeah, I really liked Vincent D'Onofrio's character, actually. He was yeah, I was kind of hoping he wouldn't get, but he kind of had to. It's, yeah, but, you know he he was the Wayne Knight of this one. I mean, he just had a, you know he and the other fat guy. Like you know, you knew they were gonna go. <laughs> Once yeah. the fat guy was eating a sandwich, I was like, like, oh yeah, he's going. And then when Vincent was like, you know, come on, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, we gotta kill him. Yeah. Uh, and I knew the Eng- I knew the English nanny was gonna be you know she was gonna get. I didn't know she'd be fish food, but that, that worked out pretty good. <laughs> that was brutal but lovely. It was, yeah, lovely. it was a crazy sequence. It was incredibly brutal, yeah. but it was a crazy, crazy sequence. Talk about a dinosaur movie sequence. Is it, it oh, really sure. went up? Well, the hard part for me is that I I went to a press screening of it before because I was going to miss the premiere, and then I went. I went got a group of friends, and we went opening night uh, in Chalmette. I went to the Chalmette Theater here in, in Louisiana. Uh, my friend runs the place, and so we we. We did a group booking and booked out some space. But people brought, like, little, little kids, which I understand, but, you know, babysitting is expensive. But I'm like, they didn't need to see that. <laughs> I'm like, you know, it's the nanny that's supposed to take care of the kids. The British nanny is supposed to take care of the kids. And, and look what's being done to her. Like, kids were crying. And I was like, yeah, it's PG-13. It's not PG-8, but PG-6. You know, like, it's, you know... But then the fun part, I think, is, you know, when the original Jurassic Park came out, I'm like, you know, some people snuck in the feet, but there some younger kids, and they didn't love it, but they were terror- terrified, and terrorized by it. It was awesome. Oh, I also think that there's some bigger thing 
with the, everybody's been kind of speculating and rumoring that 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 kind of Jaws like figure in the in the water mm-hmm. there, there could be there could be something there, you know? Um, yeah. Because doesn't he like take a pick, eat one of the dinosaurs or something like? So I mean, that thing's going to get that thing's not going to get smaller, <laughs> you know? Exactly. It's gonna I, I, outgrow its water its tongue. Yeah, a lot of people expected it to expected there to be almost a setup with it getting away, but uh, you know, you never know what exactly what exactly is going to come with that. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm really excited. There's definitely, there's definitely a Jaws tie-in, but man, Spielberg yeah. jumps on the helm, boy. It's it's a whole. <laughs> we'll we'll be we'll be losing our number one spot in all time opening <laughs> to the next one. You know. <laughs> Which that is would fine. Just be I'd rather have dinosaurs than, you know, Terminators. That's just me. Yeah. That's just more Marvel characters. Because I think what I love is it, you know, it's the dinosaur franchise is back. It, it really then, is. Yeah, it's just great to see. I mean, everyone loves dinosaurs, and everyone's grown up with dinosaurs in, in one way or another. So yeah. when they come back like this, it's just it's just pure bliss. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I love the comic book characters, but I'm kind of over it. You know, definitely. And compared to the box office, I think other people feel the same way. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's just done so well. Um, James, honestly, it's been amazing to speak with you. Um, unless there's anything else you want to tell us from the set. No, I think that's pretty much it. You know, um, I'm just happy and proud to be part of it because uh, it's really geared towards your towards your pod, uh, podcast and and. Uh, and so I just feel like uh, just happy to be part of it. Hopefully, I'll get on the next one and uh, question and wonder where my Verizon source is. <laughs> I one of my favorite lines is like, I just loved all Jake's stuff. I, mean, I think everything was all, you know, I think he was fantastic and yeah. glad that he got out. And that whole little moment where he's like, okay, it's the end of the world. We could probably get together. She's like, no, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> and brilliant stuff. Brilliant. Like, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like that's another Jurassic Park gold. You know what I mean? Definitely. And, you know, it's like, and that come up came up in other movies too, where like you know, he thinks it's some sort of attraction, and there isn't. You know, it's like that's beautiful. It's just it's a nice little callback to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I got a lot of cool stuff coming out for those who are Jurassic Park fans. I got two movies that are coming out in uh, in the fall that I think will be Golden Globe or Oscar uh, contenders. One is called Trumbo, about Dalton Trumbo, the blacklisted writer, played by Brian Cranston with uh, Dame Helen Marin. And they had a nice supporting lead of that that's coming out in November. And then um, the next thing is called I Saw the Light from Huddleston, who was Loki in the Avenger movies, is Hank Williams. I mean, he, he is Hank Williams. He's amazing. He sings and performs. And so that, he too, I mean, that's Golden Globe all over it. Uh, wow! Yeah. Apparently, there's the thing about the thing about British people playing like iconic American figures is doing quite well. Yeah. So he's playing he's playing Hank Williams, which is uh, so I have a nice role in that. And uh, those two things will be out at the uh, come November in time for the Oscars and Golden Globes. And so awesome. yeah, it's uh, I get to do the big summer blockbuster, and then I get to do things that are you know uh, Academy and. Golden Globe worthy in the fall, so I'm uh, I'm quite appreciative. I have an attitude of gratitude for sure. That's incredible. Talk about yeah, that's just an awesome movie lineup. Yeah, Uh, Yeah, no, Trumbo. I think is Trumbo could could to me could be kind of like the the sleeper Dallas Buyers Club, you know, in the sense that it's about a time in Hollywood where um, just pure innuendo and rumor. Uh, destroyed people's ability to provide to, to work and provide money for their family. So I play a character named Jade Parnell Thomas, who was the head of the House of Non American Activities, the chairman. Pre this is pre McCarthy. And uh, um, I I named the Hollywood Ten and then we put them in jail. And uh, we take away their ability to be able to for free speech and their rights. It's kinda of like, you know, these days if someone were to say on Facebook or something, such and such person uh, uh, um, is a member of ISIS, and uh, their you know their boss would fire them, 
they wouldn't be able to work, and everybody thinks that person's a terrorist. And there's no uh-huh. facts you know, to base it up. It's just mere rumor and innuendo. So it's amazing how, um, how far things went in that time period and how scared we were in the Cold War, you know, going into the Cold War, how scared we were of the communists in Russia and their power and influence over America. Um, you know, interesting time. You know, post-war, uh, we were, we were, you know, our identity was kind of, uh, we, we lived in a great deal of fear. So but then there were people who just kind of fed that fear and fed the hatred and, you know, and, uh, so it's, it's, and, and Brian Cranston's, I mean, um, amazing in this. And then for, and then the next thing is the, uh, I saw the light. I mean, Tom Waddles, and I watched him, he performed for two, two years before performing Hank Williams' song around the country just to kind of be prepared and get ready for this thing. So, I mean, there's these amazing uh, performances that are coming up come, uh, come the fall, and uh, it's just honored to be part of that, too. Yeah. No, I'm really, really excited for the Bright Cranston film, especially. Um, yeah. I, I'd seen mm-hmm. that in a couple of things. And uh, I didn't know about yeah. the Hank Williams one. That sounds great. Oh, oh yeah. man, that yeah. one's going to be, I mean, it's he's fantastic. And, and I didn't realize the, the kind of fan base that's, that's out there for Hank Williams. And so the family got behind the movie and, uh, you know, uh, that's, you know, Sony classic. So I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to rest on until they really let everybody know how, you know, how amazing that performance is. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, the Jay Roach directed uh, Trump. So that's an amazing director who can do, he could do, you know, uh, Austin Powers and then he can also do, you know, recount and <laughs> you know, like yeah. you know it's uh he's, yeah the guy's amazing so yeah. we should, we're, it's going to be an interesting fall i'm 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 ex- i'll look out for that i'm i'm yeah I'm, that would be really great i didn't realize it was Drake yeah. Jay roach as well because he did all the meet the fox yeah. films didn't he meet the parents yes <laughs> right oh wow but he also does these heavy political movies as well and, you know um i mean he's just he's he's brilliantly talented yeah Oh, I'm excited. Well, congratulations, James, and honestly, congratulations on all the success with Jurassic yeah. World. It's it's just been amazing. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm beaming. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much Proud for coming on. Yeah, thank, thank you, again, you man. And, yeah, just look me uh, Just make sure Charles also has the link and everything to it, so I can pass it on to social media. Cool. Definitely. Absolutely. Thanks so much, James. Thanks, my friend. Great to speak with we'll you. We'll talk to you. Thank you. All right. Take care.